what are some of the most challenging life issues that young black Americans in your age range have faced or are facing? Jobs. Job, job employment. Not having a job, not being employed. Not having a good paying job, bills. That's all I worry so about. So a lot of finances, financials. Yeah, a lot of finances. I don't have no money, so I always like stress myself out about it. Got the little job working, but it seems like it's, it's always not enough. It's always a problem. It's always something come up, all type of bills. I'm not where I want to be, you know, like financially. That's really, at the end of the day, I would say that's the biggest thing. Sometimes I just be like, dang, I'm really in the bottoms with nothing, you feel me? Like with no money, and I had to support myself, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So I'm always, every day, think about money. Everybody need money to survive. If you ain't got that, you're gonna be stressing on the way how to get it. If you're going out, filling them applications out, and ain't no jobs calling, you're like, damn, what I'm putting all this hard work in for? I mean, I can't get no job or whatever. That's when people become a part of statistics. Like, fuck it, he got money, I'm like, I'm in his pockets with it. Like, if I see him getting bread or whatever, like, it is what it is, because sometimes that's what you turn to. Like, you, you can turn to the block or turn to the stick-up boy, and, like, it don't matter. Like, you're going to get yours no matter what. Most of the things that's happening out here is because of some type of money that somebody was hung. Like he say, somebody agreed or envy. You know what I'm saying? All, most of that stuff come, come from people wanting the money. If you don't have the money to uh, be able, you know, to maintain yourself, you might do whatever it take just, you know, just to survive, and it could cause you to either be in prison or be dead or whatever the case is. Out here in Richmond, a lot of dudes get killed, and a lot of the guys that you grew up with end up being with the shit, trying to kill everybody, so you caught in the middle of it, so you stressing over every day about, I'm gonna get killed for me associating myself with this person or where I grew up at, so you really can't live your life to the fullest. You can't walk outside without being shot. I mean, you can't see. It's that bad. You can't. You, I mean, you guys can walk out of your house. You thinking there's a possibility you could be shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every time you look up, somebody's shooting. The police flying, and you know, it's like you can't even feel safe in your own neighborhood. Yo, you know, you can't even feel safe in your own house. Basically. It seems like innocent people always getting hurt or killed and stuff. So it's like you wonder if it's gonna be you, somebody in your family, somebody friends, you know, anybody close to you. Me and a couple of my little friends, we walking down the street or whatever. We about to go down my front, my this girl house, and out of nowhere, you just hear gunshots ringing off, and they they but they shooting at us. You don't have to be dealing with none of this stuff that's going on, but just because you're in that territory, they will shoot at you. So everyone agree with the, with that. That's it's a stressful situation. My boys, they they probably know probably six eight friends, uh, people that they went to school with that's been killed in the street. And then you know I'm on the phone with my child. I'm always other on the other side of town um, at work and I hear the pop popping in the background and then Robbie goes oh that sounds like it's it's right by the house uh, mom I'm like are you down on the ground I shouldn't have to talk to my children like we're in um, Afghanistan you know the police I seen so many crooked police in my district it ain't funny man the rollers out here is crooked man they they, they crooked so is it a stress is it is it a stressor though does it yeah. Yeah, hell yeah man they yeah. just killed my homeboy yeah. shot him shot him they handcuffed him and shot him in the back three times what they doing is is like they messing with the wrong people and it's like the people that they should be after, they not after. People that really, really ain't doing stuff, then they want to go arrest them. They want to go yeah. harass them. Then when mm -hmm. there's people out here dying, they can't convict nobody. No. If you black, you immediately, you feel me, you with the shit. That's what it is with the police. No matter who you is. If no you black, who you, you live in the hood, you got something to do with something. Right. Say if I'm driving, where I'm coming from, that's the kill. Young black people with dreads, oh, you in a stolen car. Sometimes you could be chilling or whatever. They Look at yeah. you as a young black man, so they single you out as a target. Like, yeah. he got something on him, he doing this yeah, or whatever. Right. And that's when the police brutality come up. Like, for real, for real, that's why all these cops getting shot right now. And it seemed like they hiring bipolarized white people from different counties and just putting them in yeah, here really that, that don't really give a damn about us, that don't really care really about the are. community. The stereotype is every African-American male has hair. He's got dreads. He wears his pants off his behind. All he has on is a fitted, and the only thing he has in his mouth and on his mind is getting hot. Got your hoodie, you got your white tee, you got your dreads, mm -hmm. or just off top. Even if you don't got none of that on, just because you black, you're going to get it. A lot of people who are not minority, you know, they try to hold us back in different ways than they used to. I also think that kids have internalized it. 
I think they've internalized the whole notion of self-hatred, of that people in mainstream society don't think that they're okay, so therefore it must be true. The racism still lives alive, you yeah. feel me? Like in our education system, you feel me, where we live, like if you just look around where we live, you, you don't know it's racism, like dang, you feel me? We ain't, getting, we ain't really getting no resources, you feel me? Like how everybody else or people who is not of color is getting their resources, you feel me? I just saying like a lot of like the little kids around around the, um, the, around the neighborhood that I live in and their parents, you know, they act like them. Mm -hmm. act, like, act like little kids. So when kids see that, they, they don't have nobody to look up to, you know, they do whatever. I've heard them say that if they had a man around, if they had a father that you know, things would be better, that they think they would be different because it's like they're trying to be men and they really don't have a man there to sh that, that's, that's been there for them. Relationships, your communication with, with, with the per particular person, whether it's mother or father or friend, can determine your state of mind, like how you give in the morning. That's one reason why, why kids are so angry when they go to school in the morning and ready to fight at the drop of the hat because they've been abused before they even leave home. Yes. If your mother says in the morning time, I love you, have a good day, that can kind of set the mood for you to a certain extent. And I had neighbors next door to me. Those poor kids would wake up in the morning and they were called every name. They were they weren't even yeah. called by their name. Just get your A up and mm -hmm. do this. Get your do and get you know they, yeah. they would talk to them like animals, worse than animals. Mm -hmm. And and they leave out the house. I mean they're ready to fight, you know, because they've been abused for the, for an hour, hour and a half before they even left home. Well, with a lot of people I'm around is their parents not really being there for Single them. Single parents. I was yeah. say that. Well, not some. I'm not having either one. Well, my baby daddy. He, you know, manipulative and, oh, we're going to do this when the baby get this age, mm -hmm. we're going to be together, and wind up just cutting out when he turns six months. Me and my uh, kid's father is in child support right now, and he been working for four months, and they trying to tell me that he don't got to pay child support, and that is really stressing me out. That's a mostly a lot, a lot of them, a lot of their friends don't have no mother or daddy. They daddy usually in jail. Their mom usually on drill. <laughs> okay. It's just a lot of stress, a lot of pressure.